um, instance, it was probably about about 30, 40 people that showed up for that um, particular community meeting. Um, we asked them about um, the facade designs and what they thought of those. There were some issues and questions with regards to that. Um, hence why you see the um, amended elevations in your package. That was in response to um, the comments that we actually received from the community. Um, and that is why you're seeing a different facade design. Um, the sites that you see, uh, the uh, information that you're seeing up on um, the screens um, are the revisions that were made. Um, I think you can see that um, it is much softer tone. Um, we've dropped down the um, uh, visual impact of the roof structure instead of um, kind of more pointed roof structures. We've got more flat roofs. Um, we really designed this package um, for this particular project in alignment with the overlay district. Um, this particular piece of property had been in the Stonecrest Overlay District when we applied. Um, and as such, that required us to have the building closer to the street. It also required us to have um, the pumps on the side of the building instead of the front. And I think that that's actually a very good aspect to have the pumps, um, the fuel pumps on the side of the building as opposed to being kind of the predominant thing that you see when you come into um, the center. Um, in most instances, you would see a big canopy in front, um, obscuring kind of the side of the buildings behind. Um, here, you will come into the project, um, and the canopies don't take up all of that space in the very front of the project. Um, I think what's interesting about this particular location, um, I want you to think about the fact that in the city of Stonecrest, around in this area, um, we are near the regional center, and as a result, um, the overlay district has very strict requirements on what uses are permitted within the overlay district. Um, if you have been a part of all of the conversations that um, we have had recently, you will know that there is actually no district other than District 4, which allows for gas stations within the Stonecrest overlay area. This particular piece of property um, at that time was in District 4. Hence why we applied for um, the um, special land use permit and were allowed to apply for the special land use permit at the time that this property was in Tier 4 of the Overlay District. Now, um, we have been removed from that tier. And so we are subject to simply um, the underlying land use and to seeking a, a rezoning um, in alignment with the um, requirements under the zoning ordinance. But I think what's even more profound when you really think about it is, I don't know if um, staff has the, the language map and we can't pull it out, but what I can tell you is, within the geographic area around here, there's no place to put a gas station. There's no place in Tier 1 or Tier 2, which is around the mall, because the community and the board and the city council did not approve in the last um, round last year allowing for gas stations to be located closer to the mall. They also um, did not maintain this Tier 4 along this particular stretch. They took it out, which opened up the ability of applicants to apply for whatever is allowed under that particular zoning district, hence why we're asking for the rezoning to C1. However, when you look, there is no, within probably a three-mile radius, there is no ability to put a gas station. And the gas stations that are there, there is only one that is within the city, and that is the one at Evans Mill and Mall Parkway, which has gotten a lot of flack for its look and feel. The only gas stations that we have currently, and we can only deal with what we currently have, that are currently in the city within a three-mile radius, is that gas station. The, the QT and the, um, oh, sorry, we may have the one on, Brown, actually I know that's more than three miles, that's uh, the Browns Mill and Klondike Road. You can go down the Browns Mill and Klondike Road. And my client actually had involvement with that particular um, gas station that is down at that end. Um, but that's another great distance to go if you need gas. Um, the QT and the BP are outside of city limits. It's outside of city limits. So anybody that's seeking to get gas has to go outside the city to get it, or they have to go over on Evansville and, and uh, Mall Parkway. So I think that that is significant. What we're trying to do is to provide a 
convenience store, which staff has indicated is appropriate um, for this area, for convenience items, when we look at what the land use plan says about the area, um, and the fact that this is a double yellow line street that is a minor arterial road, um, that all of the properties along this path um, are currently under contract by Jeff Vines, who is here today. Um, he's got all the properties from Hayden Quarry Road, basically down to the church, um, Turner Hill, un, um, with uh, signs posted for sale. Um, this particular property has been for sale for over 10 years, and this is the first party that has expressed any interest in buying it. So um, what we're seeing here is an opportunity for development along this path um, in a manner that we believe will provide convenience for the surrounding residents and the residents to come. There's much development coming in this particular area. And as uh, Chris has indicated, why have, and, and it is not policy, to have the residents from locally to have to go into the regional area in order to get convenience-related items. And I would con consider um, gas a convenience-related item. Now, some say, well, we can go over to the BP and the QT and, and get our gas over there. But again, you're pushing them outside of the city boundaries, where there's no benefit to the city. Um, financially, there's no sales tax, there's no property tax, there's nothing there that's benefiting the city. Um, this, however, would benefit the city. The sales tax, the property, in, um, the improvement in the property taxes, all of that will um, come to the city um, in, in some um, portion. And so, what we are um, asking um, is for the ability to develop a center um, in the um, configuration as shown. Um, that would support the surrounding community. Now, we've had um, two meetings with the community. Um, the second meeting that we had, we showed these plans. Um, we did have some questions that came up. Um, and there are some people who are here tonight that will probably speak in opposition. I would say that I've been doing gas stations a long time, and I have yet to have a room full of people, except maybe on that QT at the corner, um, because people were very happy to get rid of the other store that was there to replace it. QT. That's probably the first one that I've had where people were out like, yeah, I want a gas station. But in most instances, gas stations are not popular places. It's like the Walmart. Nobody wants it, but as soon as you put it there, everybody is there. Um, I believe that the same will be said of this. Um, this is an area um, that could use this type of convenience, and we've got additional shops and stores that will be of convenience as well. We're okay with the um, um, conditions that staff would impose on the types of uses. What we are looking for um, are restaurants that are um, sit-down, cafe-ish um, type restaurants that would be uh, allowed on the site. Um, uh, uh, it could, I, I wouldn't see a CVS. This is not a CVS or a Walmart. This is not, or Walgreens is not their location where they would have. They have to be in the middle of city centers, but um, what we can say is that um, we are looking um, for like uh, dry cleaners, um, coffee shops, um, small stores that um, would cater to the surrounding community. In fact, what we've asked are there um, entrepreneurs in the area that would have an interest in um, providing services for their surrounding community. I think that that's a great opportunity for us to work cooperatively with small businesses um, that are in the area or that would like um, a shot at trying to open um, a facility here within their own community that the community could then um, support. We believe it will be a safe spot. It will be a um, aesthetically pleasing spot. It will be a walkable spot. Um, it will be a place where kids can go if they need to run up the street and get a, a bar of candy after school, or you know, ride their bike up to um, go pick up some convenience item for mom. They would be able to do that without having to go all the way up um, past the mall over the interstate to get to the other side in order to get to the QT or to the BP. Um, that's where we stand right about now. Um, because again, remember, no gas stations anywhere in Stonecrest Overlay District except Tier 4, and that now is all the way on the other side of Evans Mill and um, Mall Parkway. That's the closest you can get, and you still have to go through the slot process to do that. So um, we are respectfully requesting approval a recommendation of approval of the application. I'm here to answer any questions um, that you all may have. Um, we did do the um, liquor survey. Um, we do meet the criteria. Um, Chris had asked us to go back and show a clear path. We were able to do that. Excuse so. me. I'm sorry. Um, the, the 10 minutes have, have elapsed. However, you I'm can done. extend the time if you'd like. I'm, I'm done. 
Being that the uh, time has expired and this battle was done, let's go into. Uh, well, first, do we have any questions for Ms. Battle? Going to opposition. Okay. There's Thomas. Any opposition that would like to speak, you can come forth at this time and please give Ms. Lowe your card. I already gave Ms. Lowe my card. My name is Faye Coldfield, and I live very close to this area. And I'd like to tell you that right now, while we're talking about another gas station, Ms. Battle was incorrect. There is a gas station on Hillendale and um, Evans Mill that's also in the city. And what do we need all these gas stations for? We get the same picture. Every time somebody comes and wants to build a gas station, it's like they pull that picture out of a mall and we get out of a, 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 a picture book and that's what we get. Now, if you want to talk about what we need, I don't eat out of convenience <coughs> stores. Convenience stores are just like dollar stores. They're very expensive. And for someone to suggest that the only thing the city of Stonecrest residents er need is the ability to go to a convenience store to, as she said, grocery shop. That's an insult to our community. Right now, we have two supermarkets in all of Stonecrest. That's the Publix and the food, the, uh, the food Depot. So when I want to go shopping for groceries, I have to go outside of Stonecrest. When I go outside of Stonecrest for groceries, that also means I do my shopping outside of Stonecrest because we do not have any grocery stores. Now, I, I, I'm just at a loss as to why we need so many gas stations. You know, I ran out of gas in the 20-some years I live here. I ran out of gas one time, and that was on Woodrow going towards Klondike. And guess what? I was able to turn my car around and being out of gas, I was able to coast to two gas stations with no gas. We don't need another gas station. This is prime land. And for someone to come in and say, oh, nobody's going to build there, that's not true. All you have to do is look at the fourth ward. People said nobody would build in the fourth ward. But look what's going up there now. You are taking prime residential property that could be converted into something, and all you're going to do is put a gas station there. We don't need a gas station. We don't need a convenience store. We don't need any more of these little ghetto shopping centers, which is what we always get. What we need is a supermarket. We need a real, live supermarket. And I would like everybody that's in opposition of this to just stand up, because we want a community that's decent. That's what we had when we moved out here. Most of you have been out here for a long time. The people that live in Parks of Stonecrest, they aren't going to be walking up to the, to the convenience store to get a bill. These are people that shop at grocery stores and who want and need and deserve a grocery store, not some little ghetto store. And by the way, before you start approving these stores, you need to have crime stats on what what the crime is in gas stations, because, oh, you know, I'm a retired police officer. So I can tell you it's very high. It's very high in apartment stores. So, I mean, I mean in apartments. So what I want you to do is I want you to think, would you like this backing up to your property? Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Bofield. Is there anybody else like to speak in opposition? There's six minutes and 48 seconds remaining. Okay. Thank you. My name is Michelle Stephen Smith. I'm a resident of Parks of Stonecrest. I've lived there for almost 11 years. And one thing that I'm, which making me opposition of this request is the quality of life. I think that quality of life is something that you can't measure in dollars. It's an opportunity cost that can't be measured by something tangible. And I feel that putting this convenience store gas station backing up to actual residents who live in the Parkers of Stonecrest backyard is not something that will enhance or improve our quality of life, but actually make it worse. There's studies that say that having a gas station in close proximity to residential areas can cause environmental issues with toxic gasoline vapors and chemicals such as benzene and car cartogen 
in the atmosphere. That's also not a, as a hamper to the residents who live in the area, Parks and Stonecrest, the apartments, as well as the daycare and people who attend the church, which would be right next to this gas station and convenience store. This also would be an eyesore to our community. Even though we have the nice, pretty pictures here today, we know and we've seen in this area throughout Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, what a gas station looks like on day one and what it looks like a year later. I have a fear of crime in the area. Also, um, studies show that convenience stores can lower the property value of nearby homes and opportunities for resale. Think of the, think of the residents who were this gas station and convenience store would back up to. What is the opportunity for resale if, they, if potential buyers see this in the backyard? Also, a potential increase for crime. We have the new QT, even though it's outside of Stonecrest, there's already been crime and vagrants who constantly are at that location. We don't want this right in our backyard, right um, where we, have, we live. Also, um, Ms. Battle keeps speaking of convenience, convenience. But there's, ne there's never been a market feasibility study to really show, is this convenience? Is this something that this community wants? And she speaks of convenience. And like um, what, what she said before, I don't see anyone in the area walking to this grocery convenience store to pick up common staples that they need in their house. We have Walmart within a mile, and we also have other grocery stores within a few miles of where we are in this area. Um, convenience stores, the prices of things, um, items within there are much higher than you would find at a regular grocery store. So it really isn't convenience if it's costing you more. I have lived here 11 years. I do not mind driving a mile, three miles to get gas. Most people get gas on their way to do other things, go to work, go to church. They don't necessarily purposely go out and get gas, and so it really would not be a convenience to us. It would not improve our quality of life, and I ask that you deny this application. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. There's three minutes and 55 seconds remaining. Thank you. Good evening. To give your card to Ms. already. I'm Cheryl Mathis, and most of you know me, and if I haven't said Happy New Year to you, I'm saying it today. All right. I do want to share with you that I'm a longtime resident here in Texas, and you know I'm really concerned about not just the growth, but making sure that we have smart growth. And in my opinion, this is not smart growth. Number one, it's already zone R100, which means we know it's residential. So whether that change, the zoning changes to, say, an R85 or something like that, it's still residential. So I'm asking that you all deny this application or this slot because, number one, it's already zoned residential. We don't want or we're not asking you to change the zoning. I know that they are, but it's not going to benefit us. It looks like it's the same site plan that was used for the Browns Mill uh, location. And that one I do know, even though they ended up going to, to court, the Cab County Commissioners denied it. And they did have to go to court to get it done, and there were conditions also on that. But again, that was a commercially zoned area. This is residential, so it's going to change the context of our neighborhood. Now, I'm in District 5, but it's still going to impact my district as well. I don't go and shop in, I mean, we don't build houses in commercial locations. So I'm asking you all to deny it because it's, it's commercial, and we don't want a commercial business in a residential area. The other thing is, again, like my colleagues have said, it's not convenient for us. I don't mind driving two or three miles to get gas. I've always done it, done it for over 30 years. So I don't have a problem doing that again. So this is not going to be a major convenience for us. And then on top of that, I didn't attend the meetings, but because I represent the Klondike Area Civic Association, I've gotten a number of phone calls from residents who did attend this meeting. And from what I understand, there was an overwhelming uh, people, well, the, I think out of 30 to say 40 people that were there, the majority of those people did not want it and they expressed it very strongly. And so I'm asking in lieu of those people that you consider denying it as well. Because number one, we don't need it. We really don't need it. And you know, I do a lot of business in Gwinnett County. And if you go like where uh, Highway 78 is, you take Highway 78 all the way down to Sugarloaf Parkway, and you can count on one hand. And I do believe it was the QT, and then down further where the SAMS is. There, there are no other gas stations on that strip. Mm -hmm. And so they're doing smart growth. They have commercial businesses there, but nothing residential. And certainly not many gas stations. And so we're asking you, because it's going to change the dynamics of this community if you change the zoning, and certainly make it convenient for the developer. We know that their only interest is to make money. 
We don't knock that. But certainly don't invade our area to do that. I'd much rather see some residences go up, whether they're apartments or not. I'd rather see that than to see this strip center right here in a residential area. And so I'm asking that you all consider denying it altogether. And then I'd like to go even further to ask you all to consider putting a six-month moratorium on putting gas stations out here, period. That way we can see the dynamics of how this city is going to grow and certainly want to make sure that it's smart growth. We don't want to center uh, more uh, commercial buildings in a residential area when, in fact, we can put them in commercial areas. And so we do ask that you consider denying this application and consider that moratorium as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mathis. There's 37 seconds remaining. There's 37 seconds remaining. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Yes, ma'am. I'm Susan Lee. She has my car. I live in the parks of Stonecrest. I just got a uh, couple of questions to these guys. Why in my neighborhood? Those homes are at $290,000 or more. It's going to decrease property values. Why in my neighborhood? Thank you, Ms. Lee. 20 seconds remaining. Or with 20 seconds remaining, did you, did you want to get, did you have a fill out a card and gave it to her? Okay, my name is Winston McDonald. Um, for the people here, most of you might know me, you might see my name floating around that next door, because I was the one who put out that request to say about a rezoning meeting, and I was trying to be as fair as possible. So what I did, I just put, put a meeting out there. I didn't deny or accept it. So I wanted to hear from the people of Stonecrest, and I can tell you, over 99% of the people said no, no gas station. And I'm not met the owners and everything here. Nice day and everything. Right. You know? And oh, okay. Uh -huh. Tom, you laughed. Do you want uh, you want to give him another minute to finish your presentation? Need to vote. We're going to extend it one minute. Okay. You have to vote on the extension. Yeah, but All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Yeah, but what I, yes, thanks for the extra time. All right. This, uh, what I was saying is this. As a person that did in business for over 30 something years, I think it's all, and I, I know what business is. Business is about making money. I, th I thought it would be fair for let majority rule, right? So let give the community the chance to say whether they want it or not. Not just to deny these people their business rights. But put it out there to the people, do you want this in your community? And if 99% of the people say no, mm -hmm. I have to go along with them, even if I'm with these guys. Mm -hmm. And the, the second thing too, uh, the second application that, they added, that there was another people that put in for this um, gas station, they gave them a 12 month um, delay. So it's only bit fair to give these guys an okay when you already denied one person you're not one of other applicants. So, no, you're asking for a lawsuit here. Why, would we, why did this guy get it, but I didn't get it? If I was that a guy, I'd definitely file a lawsuit with the city if I was a denied. So, that, that's my take, okay? Thank you, Mr. Thank McDonald. You. And also, Ms. Battle, you have another minute uh, if you would like to speak for another minute on the application, and then we'll take questions from Ms. Battle. <laughs> Um, willing to clarify um, the distance radius that we were talking about, and I apologize for misspeaking, but it's basically about a two to three mile radius, and that's what I was trying to indicate in terms of um, where else one can get a gas station in the area. There's no question in the Suncrest under overlay district. Um, we're extremely happy from that perspective. Um, I, I get that there are some who say, hey, look, we don't want any convenience items. I find that very interesting to say, well, they overcharge you at the convenience store, but the city, uh, I think, just banned uh, dollar stores where they were getting a cheaper price, so you don't want them to have a cheap price at the dollar store, and you're, you're upset because they've got a larger price at the gas station, but at, you know, at the end of the day, these are convenience items that allow for people not to have to go again far away from their homes in order to get, and I wasn't talking about picking up fruits and vegetables, I'm saying, you know, the gas stations are good if you want to pick up something to drink, you need some ice, something of that nature. I'm not talking about picking up perishables. Thank you, Ms. Battle. And also, Ms. Battle, uh, if you would stay at the podium, we're going to go ahead and go to our questions by the commissioners. 
So the commissioners have any questions for Ms. Battle? Uh, I have a question. Commissioner Wright. Well, my question is, providing more feedback on what happened at the community meeting. Um, at the first initial community meeting, we did have uh, probably about 30 to 40 people. Um, I would say overwhelmingly, yes, most of the folks there were in opposition. I mean, there was no hiding that. Like I said, I haven't been to a community meeting for a gas station where um, suddenly I had a bunch of people saying that they wanted it. Um, we did ask questions with regards to um, the facade designs and, and those issues, and a lot of people, we did get comments back on that. Um, we got some comments back on, um, including the gentleman who was here, about um, the placement of the buildings on the site and making sure that we had um, visuals that match um, the site um, design. This was designed specifically for this particular piece of property, as were um, the elevations, and that if this were approved, um, we would ask that it be conditioned on both the site plan and the elevations to ensure that um, what we say we're going to do, we would do. One more question. Did... Uh this coming to ever look at any other property outside this property to, to, to develop this same type of um, I think that the, the interest, I'm just going to be candid with you, there are a number of individuals who want to build gas stations within the city of Stonecrest. I mean, whether we like it or not, it is a form of business. It is a business that people need. We need to have gas stations. There may be a question about where or how many. I get that. Um, but the real, the biggest challenge is that people have wanted to put them up around the mall area where I personally think they're probably the better area to have them, but um, the overlay district denies that opportunity. So I think that, yes, there have been there other spots, yes, but none of those spots are available. So anything that you want in the immediate area, you've got to go at least um, roughly two miles out plus. Uh, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to ask a question. And I may have just missed this. Okay, who is uh, Michelle? <laughs> oh, the person that's responding to you know, these questions, or these questions about this community? Yeah. Just follow up. Yeah. Is this battle? Yeah. Okay, because I was reading through that. They had, that meeting must have been a very good one because it looked like they were opposed to uh, a lot of these things. No I, said, no, I said that they were opposed. Okay. I'm not trying to. Oh, no, I realize that. I'm just saying it looked like that was a lot of interest, because a lot of times you don't have a lot of interest. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of interest. Absolutely. We were happy that we had as many people that came. We did have some people that came up afterwards who actually indicated some support, including um, some of the folks that lived in the neighborhood. Um, but, you know, at the end of the again, they came up to me after the meeting. I'm not suggesting that there was a bunch of people. I said a couple of people came up and kind of said, yeah, I think I could work with you. Um, but the last majority of folks, no, they were not uh, supportive. But this is a commercial corridor by the count, uh, the city's own making. It is a commercial corridor. And a lot of times, you know, when people will say convenience, you know, because I've lived in convenience area, like downtown Nashville, where I go to the little market and a tomato was three dollars. So, you know, it's not always going to be just picking up things. And most people that live in homes, I believe the lady said, $290,000, they have cars and they can just go and you know, buy what they want by at the Publix or the Kroger's. I just wanted to have a better understanding of what I was looking at. And the, uh, and the buyers, have they considered putting something else on that land? Did they ask that to the community, or was it just well? We looked at a again. Store and no one's putting a liquor store. No one said that. Okay. Okay. What we asked for was the ability to sell beer and wine um, within the convenience store, which is typical of most um, convenience stores, whether they have gas pumps or not. Um, interesting enough, um, staff did not, in its conditions, um, suggest that a convenience store in and of itself was problematic. Um, the convenience items and the shops that they are proposing um, are all appropriate in the corridor based on the current land use. Um, as staff has indicated, the current zoning, um, the current zoning actually is not compatible with the underlying land use. Did they have so, any names of the shops that were going to be coming in that they would be leasing to? Um, no, we did not have specific names of shops. We are willing to put conditions on. Um, the types of uses that the community would not want to see um, in um, in the building, but no, they have not gone out trying to get um, 
um, entities to come in because we're too early in the process. Commissioner Wright. Commissioner Lee. I have a question, Ms. Battle. So during your community meeting, was, was the subject matter just about the gas station? Did any people in the audience, any of the community members say, well, Ms. Battle, uh, we'd like to see a Starbucks, or Ms. Battle, we'd like to see a dry cleaning store, a barbershop, were any of those suggestions made at the meeting? Um, I think that the sense, the, the, my recollection um, was that there wasn't a lot of discussion about those specific uses. Maybe somebody else from the meeting might remember something differently. I don't recall people specifically saying what they wanted. Um, I think we had put out things like coffee shop um, or um, um, you know, a, a small place where people could come and you know work from their workspace. Like a lot of people now go up to the Panera, um, and so we were talking about having spaces that would allow for people, particularly who work from home, um, to have a space where they wouldn't have to go all the way up to the mall in order to do that. Um, so we talked about things of that nature, but I don't believe that anybody had any specific type of shops that they wanted. Thank you, Ms. Pat. All right. Being that there are no more questions for Ms. Battle for the opposition, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing portion of this meeting, and we can now go into discussion. You need to vote on that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You need to vote to close the public hearing. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I'm just getting uh, too anxious. Okay. Is uh, can we vote to go ahead and have the public hearing closed? Make a motion to close the public hearing. I second. Move a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, unanimous. Thank you. All right. So now we will go into discussion. Uh, commissioners, what's on your mind? We've heard the presentation with the opposition and with the applicant. Uh, the, <clears throat> the applicant wants a rezoning and a swap community. It appears, based off the persons who spoke in opposition, they don't want to see this type of development in the area. And I'm just trying to get you guys' thoughts on it before we vote. Well, I am concerned, you know, about the proliferation of gas stations and the type of development that are being offered to Stonecrest. So I concur with what was said earlier as far as um, the need for <coughs> no need. Um, shopping, we have stores close by that people don't mind going to. I don't see how you know, this development is going to, uh, especially when it's so close to other residential areas, and the people who are living there are concerned about it. They're not excited about it. <laughs> They're concerned about proximity to their residents. Um, that's, I definitely hear that and definitely agree with it. Well, I've been to quite a few of the meetings, uh, and I feel what a lot of the people are saying, and also phone calls and so forth. And you have not exactly all the, you know, really want this as far as from what I hear. Uh, but uh, this is what I hear from you. Okay. If, if I could clarify quickly, so you have the rezoning, which will change the zoning district from R100 to neighborhood shopping district, which will allow basically this stores part of it, and then you have the slug, which allows the um, the, the pumps. Right. Yes. So, so most definitely on the, even with the rezoning, it's already zoned for residential with this area, and I know Ms. the young lady, I think Ms. Mathis stated, or it could have been Ms. Smith, that the housing, $290,000 house was over there right now, which this land is accomplishes the backside of. Um, and I don't think that, and according to Ms. Battle, there is no specific uh, shops in mind. I think that this, the developer wants to get the zoning, but there's no contracts for any type of businesses to move in. That's my understanding. So, we have two items on this application. One which we want to rezone from the residential area that's already there, and then a swap in order to have gas pumps if 
the rezoning takes place so they can have gas pumps. So, commissioners, uh, I'm entertaining motions. Well, I'll make a motion. I'll make yes, a motion that we deny the rezoning as well as the if, if, if we can fall on them separately, please. Okay. Okay. Motion that we, we, I'll take the first one. All right. I'll make a motion that we, de uh, we deny the request for rezoning from a R100. All right, I second your motion. So it's been moved and properly seconded that we deny the rezoning of the application. I'd like to call for a vote. All in favor of the motion. Before, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Before the vote, if um, you are voting to deny, it would be helpful um, to, so you, you need to adopt some findings of fact. And so the, the staff has provided you all with findings of fact. If you're going to disagree with those, um, as the staff pointed out, once we're going to make a motion to deny the request for commercial, the staff has pointed out in their review, may this be K and S, and that does address proposed use consistent with the policy. I, I want to be clear, so staff recommended uh, approval of the rezoning of the neighborhood shopping district. Uh, this staff recommended, but staff recommended uh, denial of the of the slug application. So, right, let me clear that. Right. Then you are criteria. Well, so the the criteria that you mentioned are our slug criteria. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you need to, the this on page seven is the reason criteria. Okay. Well, I still make my motion. <laughs> 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 from the R one hundred. Um, <clears throat> because. We have to be concerned with the impact of the neighborhood. And to me, uh, the residents there, they're concerned about their property value. The property value is important, and that zoning will impact the residential areas located so closely to that development. Okay. Well, I'd like to second that motion. Or denial of the rezoning. All in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. Unanimous denial recommendation for the rezoning. And what say you on the slug uh, application, Commissioner Wright? Once again, I will gladly speak. Okay. I make a motion that we deny the slug application. They still in the criteria so, pointed out by the staff, and I concur, which was B, K, and S. All right. Second, the motion has been moved and properly seconded for denial of the slug application. All in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hey, Mr. Eager, how are, you, are you abstaining on this one? I'm staying on this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Three in favor of the denial and one abstention. So the motion passes. All right. That are that is all the applications for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank everyone for coming.